I am so excited about our interview with our guest today because she is a mom and a business owner just like me. So I know we're going to have a lot to talk about. And I know you guys have said that you wanted to hear more stories from moms who are running their businesses successfully with a family. So she's going to be talking about how she manages raising this massive family. She has five kids. She has a husband. It blows my mind how she does that also. She's going to talk about that today. And you're also going to hear her philosophy on having babies and how it actually affects your business. And fun fact about this guest is she dropped out of high school and got married at 18. So she literally built her business from the ground up with pretty much nothing. And in her business, she helps women raise their businesses and their babies by scaling to multiple six figures and working less than 20 hours a week. So you can learn more about her and connect with her on Instagram at the Yale Bendahan and on her website, yaelbendahan.com. Now, welcome Yael. Let me know, did I pronounce that correctly? Um, it's Yael, but I, I, I tell this to everyone. I'm like, almost nobody pronounces it correctly the first time. So like, it was close. Some okay, people call okay. it Yale. I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> that's not even close. Okay. Well, not even close. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad that you're here. So let's, before we dive into the craziness that is your life today, let's talk a little bit about like your history. So I know um, you got married at 18. So is this around the same time that you started your business or what is, what does the timeline kind of look like? Oh gosh. Oh, hell, hell no. Okay. So I was raised by a doctor and a lawyer and very much raised by like, I mean, my mom actually quit. She actually quit being a lawyer and I was five. So she technically is a lawyer. She does not practice. Um, my dad still is a doctor. And, um, and I grew up with this, with like a mom who like, we knew her whole story, how she missed us so much. And she was working like crazy hours and she quit to be home with us. Cause being, you know, being home with your children is so important. So like, that was kind of like, that was an atmosphere in which I was raised. My mother never really worked when we were young kids. Now she teaches part-time in some, in some schools, but I pretty much, I mean, my whole childhood, she was there. So, um, I got married, like I said, I got married at 18. I dropped out of high school because I, my family moved to Israel from New York, um, when I was 12. And so, as you can imagine, that is not the best time to move countries. Um, so needless to say, it was just not a great, uh, adjustment. And, um, yeah, basically I left school. So, um, I met my husband actually through his sister. I was in an, like a post high school program in England, um, <laughs> which is he's British. So I was there. Um, and that's where I met her and, um, and yeah, we got married when I was 18, he was 19. Um, and I had my first baby, uh, a week, uh, 10 days, it's exactly two weeks before our first anniversary. Okay. So yes, he is December 10th. Their anniversary is actually ironically for Jewish people is Christmas. Um, so yeah, so he was born literally two weeks before our first anniversary. And like, that was it. Like I was a mom and like, I had no, really no interest in doing anything else, honestly. Cause I was like, what can I do? Even if I wanted to, like, what am I qualified to even do? And I figured I was pretty qualified to have children and take care of them. Cause I'm the oldest of six. So I was like really good at that, you know? And, um, so there was no, like, kind of like, I didn't start my business initially, like, because I felt something missing in my life. The only thing that was missing in our life was money. So, um, that was pretty much, that was pretty much how I got started. So when my, when my, young, my fourth son was, I had my, my kids pretty much about two years apart, roughly. So my oldest was about six. My youngest was was about six, seven. My youngest was one. And my husband sent me down. He's like, listen, I mean, we've, we've managed this so far with one salary, but we really just can't anymore. You need a, you need to get a job. And I was like, no, oh, you know, because I've been a stay at home mom my entire motherhood. And I, and I didn't want to leave my baby. He was like one year old. Like we all know that's like such a cute age. And I was like, I, you know, and doing the math with what I was qualified to do, which is essentially just get a minimum wage job, you know, behind a counter or something. Um, I probably would, you know, I'd basically be breaking even on the childcare. And I was like, that is just not worth it to me. And, um, I just have to find something to do that I can do from home. And, uh, and I discovered blogging, um, you know, as moms do like, Oh, I'm a mom. I can blog so I can make a mom blog. Um, but then I realized after a while that it was like a very like long-term income strategy. Right. Like it takes time to build up that audience, to create products, to like monetize. And so I started working as a virtual assistant for other bloggers because I already had skills. I just didn't have the time to, you know, the patient, I, I didn't have the, the timeline to like wait a year and a half, two years before I started making any appreciable money. So, um, 
So through being a virtual assistant, I, I started doing social media and then I started doing some Facebook ads. And then I discovered that actual businesses paid better than bloggers. And, um, and I became a market, just a marketing strategist. I found, I discovered funnels, sales funnels and things like that. And I basically moved into kind of done for you, um, services doing like funnels, launching, um, things like that, right? Like all the marketing strategy stuff. I just totally geek out on it. Um, and so things were going pretty well. And I was starting to even put out like a couple of like smaller, like passive income, like workshops and courses. And it was like super cool. And then I got pregnant with my, um, with my daughter. And, um, so yeah, so I started my business as a mom of four. So like, it, like people are like, oh, I, you know, I had to find my identity as a mother. I'm like, my identity was a mother. I've been a mother my entire adulthood, basically. Um, what I had to do was find my identity as just, yeah, L, like the person outside of being a mom, um, which was like really, really interesting. It was a very interesting journey for me because I kind of like did it backwards in a way. Yeah. That's so interesting because most people, they have kids later in life, right? Like in right. their late twenties, early thirties, and they've kind of gone through that discovery period. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. So did you notice anything? And I guess, I guess this kind of ties into like growing your business too. Like did you notice that there were things that came out of the woodwork, I guess, as you were starting your business and then as you continue to grow your business, just kind of like internal things that you didn't think that you would have to deal with? Um, yeah. Okay. So I definitely, for a very long time, I, I think I played much smaller than I should have because I felt so unqualified, right? Like I felt like, are people going to know that I don't even have a college? I don't even, I mean, forget a college degree. Like I don't even have a high school diploma, you know, like, um, you know, and who am I to, you know, to speak in front of people or try to give anyone advice or, you know, or even like have people pay me a lot of money for stuff because like, you know, I mean, my sister is, you know, an educational psychologist, right. She was in school for five years and, you know, her earning potential is larger. Yeah. But it's going to be a much longer run, you know, runway until she can really start, you know, going into her private practice and supervision and stuff. Like it's a very long, like kind of road. And, and it almost felt like cheating. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like if I almost, I almost makes me feel guilty that like, I like got away with, I mean, and I don't, and I, and I didn't get away with anything because I worked my butt off and I took courses and I would like stay up, like I would do all nighters and I would, I would be listening to trainings while I was folding laundry and while I was washing dishes and while I was baking, you know, and while I was cooking, like I, I was like all in on this. Like once I, you know, once I decided that I was going to, you know, I'm very like, I'm a three on the Enneagram. So I'm an achiever. So once I decided I'm doing something, I'm like going to like do it like all the way. Um, so yeah, that was like, it almost felt like it'll feel sometimes like kind of like, Ooh, like, you know, is this, is this fair <laughs> in a way? Right. Like, um, yeah. and, and, and also, yeah, I guess it was just like, I still, that still kind of creeps up for me. Right. Because I have like, you know, all the people in my mastermind are like, Oh, I you worked for 20 years in this. And then I did this, you know, or like, I, you know, I worked for 10 years in HR managing teams of a hundred. And then I decided to become a coach. Right. And I'm like, I, I mean, I manage five children and a husband that feels like a lot, you know? So like, it does, you know, sometimes it does come up and it makes me feel kind of inadequate of like, you know, am I qualified to do this? But then I just remind myself that, you know, I wasn't qualified to run Facebook ads or do marketing strategy five years ago. And I feel pretty qualified now based on my experience. And, um, and as, you know, as my business grows and as I start moving into team rather than spending my time, right. Um, I, and our friend Adrian Dorson reminded me that like, you know, leadership and team management is, is a skill. It's like a skill you have to learn like any other skill, you know, it's just, you know, very, very people focused, but it's, it's doable and it's learnable. So I guess, you know, those like new level, new devil. So um, I guess that's also, you know, that, that, that stuff comes up at every point in your business and you're like, Oh, am I, am I qualified? Am I equipped to do this? Am I the right person for this job? So mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many parallels when you were talking, I was just like shaking my head. Cause I was like, yes, been there, <laughs> done that, felt that yeah. <laughs> totally resonate with that. And like the, those feelings of imposter syndrome with siblings too. It's like something that you don't realize will come up, but it, it does. And it's like, the, it's so strange to me because I guess I would technically be like quote unquote qualified because I went to high school, I went to college, but my brother didn't go to college, but I still feel like he's overqualified in some things than I am. It's this weird thing that like we have yeah. to work through and it's, yeah. it's so strange how that happens. But yeah, I mean, of course, like wherever you're at in your business, there's always new challenges that you come up against and you have to work through. But I mean, understanding where those feelings are coming from is so crucial to scaling though. Right. So, Oh, for sure. 
Yeah. So I would love to just talk for a couple of minutes about your philosophy on having babies and how it affects your business. And I also want you to kind of paint the picture of what things look like in your house right now, because when I'm thinking of like having five kids in a household, (laughs) I'm thinking of like underwear on like in my refrigerator, like (laughs) socks everywhere, like somebody puking in the floor. Like I'm just thinking complete chaos. So I want you to kind of explain that too. Okay. I mean, listen, I have four boys, right? I have four, four boys and a girl. So I'm not going to say that my life is not complete chaos, but 50% of the time, um, I do not have any underwear in my fridge that has never happened. Um, but I mean, at this particular moment, at the moment of our recording, it is 8 45 PM my time. Um, I'm pretty sure the majority of my children are in bed. My house is a bit of a disaster, but that's okay because it's Thursday night and I have a cleaner who comes on Monday and on Friday. Um, and also it's our Sabbath. Um, you know, I'm Jewish, so it's a Sabbath on Friday night. So Friday's always day where we're always like cleaning up and getting ready anyway. So at Thursday, I tend to kind of let things go a little more because I know I'm gonna have to clean it up anyway tomorrow, um, you know, after I finish cooking and everything. Um But yeah, I mean, the truth is like now my baby is in daycare, which was not the case for the first like year and a bit of her life. Um, I didn't want to send her out because it was was my first daughter it was my first baby after, you know, four and a half years. And I just love the baby stage so much. Like newborn is not so easy for me, but like after like three to, you know, four months, I just like, I cannot get enough of it. Like I want all the babies. And, um, and, and I just want to just be with her and enjoy her. You know, she's just such a great little person to be around. Um, so it was really hard for me to send her out. Uh, but but she's really happy because like she was getting really bored with me. So like it makes me feel better because she's so excited to go every day. And it's my neighbor upstairs. And she's like literally just a few floors away. So um, so like it's literally I get, that's like this is like the best case scenario for me. I've never sent the child out like at this young age, so to speak. Like for me, like at one year felt like very young to me. Um but yeah, I mean, my kids get off to school. I, I tend to be a night owl, so I stay up pretty late. I'm not great at waking up super early. Um, so all these people are like, oh, I wake up at five and get things done. I'm, I'm like, no, I can't. Um, because in my time zone, I'm seven hours ahead minimum of my clients um, and people on my team and stuff. So I just tend to be up late working till probably like 11, 12 sometimes. Um, you know, I do mostly like, like work, work, like writing, um, strategizing, things like that. I do that during the day, like in the mornings. Um, and then I do like any sort of calls or any sort of communication needs to happen in the evenings because that's when my team is around and that's when things are happening. So, um, I like having that like morning block of like three hours, let's say of like, I can just kind of sit and focus on whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's, um, whatever, writing copy, writing emails. Um, this morning I recorded a whole bunch of reels, um, for my marketing assistant to, you know, use, um, for Instagram. So yeah, but I mean, like, my kids do a lot, actually. My oldest is almost, he's almost 12. He'll be 12, like December, right? So he's, he'll be almost, he's almost 12. Um, I have a 12 year old, 10 year old, eight year old, and almost six year old and, uh, and the baby. So they all put away their own laundry. They all fold and put away their own laundry. Um, my two older kids will clean up the, look very, very qualified to like clean up the kitchen. My two young kids are very qualified to clean up the living room. Um, you know, there, that's a lot of stuff that I actually had to let go of, right? Like things that I felt like would never be done as well as me, like folding laundry, for example, right? I was very like, I was like Marie Kondo type of laundry folder. Like it all had to look like perfect. And like, after a while I just decided, you know what, if it's dry and if it's in their basket, like they each have their own clean laundry basket. After that, it's not my problem. I will wash it. I will dry it. I will sort it into their basket. And after that, they'll either find it in their drawer or in their basket. Like, and I think that's definitely like a muscle I had to exercise as well because I was really a control freak. I am, I am a control freak. Um, it's very hard for me to let go of control. And it's funny how like that had to, that mirrored itself in my home life and also in my business life where I started also outsourcing to team members and things like that, where you like, but I just do it so much, you know, I could just do it faster. I could, you know, but like, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. And I think that goes for your business as well as your home. Um, kids are capable of so much more than you probably imagine they are. Um, I mean, my kids have been like very capable of doing a lot of things. My oldest two have been like able to like cook, like they, they make like pancakes, eggs, um, like they, they, you know, they like baking, right? Like they've been doing that since they were like seven or eight. Um, so I think that also it's just important. Like, you know, if you think, you know, when you have children, like you think, oh, everything is on me. And yeah, for a certain amount of time, that will be true because they will be very small, but they do grow up and they can do more than you think younger than you think. Um, and so that's kind of like my, you know, 
it's 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 hard. It's definitely it's 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 a it's a work in progress. Um, both me and them, you know, my my twelve year old last night was told to wash the dishes and told me he would he'd rather die because dying would be easier than living this hard life he has to live. And I was like, whoa, okay, you know. But <laughs> it was like I was like I mean at that point I said you know I learned this from my friend Ashley who actually has ten kids and a business and homeschools them. I know. I was when we say I have a big family, I'm like. It's nothing. Wait, like wait, 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 wait. Yeah. She has 10, kids, ten children, mostly boys. Yeah. And she, and she homeschools them. Yeah. And they her house runs like a well-oiled machine. And the one thing I learned from her was like when your kids like, oh, I can't do this well, then they basically get that job until they can do it really well. Like Love you that. don't get to graduate from that job until you have perfected that job. So I was like, well, if you feel you don't wash dishes so well, then you know what the solution to that is, you know. It's like, no, I can, I can. I'm like, okay, show me. Right. And like, they have to be able to do it well for a certain amount of time um, before, before they can graduate from that job. Right. So like, um, there's just kind of like little, like little tricks and hacks and like ways I just kind of try to get around things. Um, my house is definitely not as clean, and t- I guess not clean, but tidy as it was when I was not working, but it's kind of like a trade-off, you know? And then mm-hmm. it is what it is, right? Like, you do what you got to do and you just have to kind of pick your priorities and choose what's the most important to you. And it's like relatively okay. It's not like completely embarrassing when people walk in and like, I'll just consider that a win. So yeah, yeah, totally. As you were talking about like graduating to different levels, my mind, like I have such a systems focused mind. I'm like, okay, I need to create this chart and it needs to be laminated and there needs to be like stage one, two, three, four, five. And like you check. I keep, off getting, I keep saying I need to get around to making a chart. I'm like, I, I just, I just never, never get around to doing it. I feel like I should though. Like my friend will literally create like SOPs of like, this is what the kitchen looks like when it's clean. This is what the living room looks like when it's clean. This is what your bedroom looks like when it's clean. And unless like this room matches that picture, your job is not done. Right. So like, I think that's brilliant. And, you know, and, and I keep yeah. meaning to do it. Um, she and I would get along very well. I feel like. Yes, That's I'm so sure. <laughs> and you should definitely interview her too. I'll give you her information. Yes. So, I would yeah. love to talk to her. That's, oh my yes. gosh. She's all Amazing. about systemizing your home. So yeah. Love that. Yeah. It, yeah. She's clearly a pro at it. So that's amazing. Yes. Um, I'd also just like to hear about your overall philosophy about having babies and how it affects your business. So after yeah. you, you started after you had four kids, was that yeah. right? Yeah. So, so my youngest was one. Has anything changed in terms of your philosophy from then to now, now that you have one more? Um, Well, this, I mean, having this baby, my my daughter, who's a year and a half, almost a year and a half old now. I mean, that was my first experience having a baby, like going through the whole pregnancy and postpartum. And I don't even consider birth because birth, I don't even mind. Like I could do that all the time. It's postpartum. That's the hardest for me, honestly. Um, So the truth is, I mean, and I happened to be pregnant through COVID, which was like really, um, that was a real cluster because I was like, just as I was starting to feel better, like going to my second trimester, it's like, oops, it's March and all the kids are home. And, uh, oh and, gosh. and then that was when I, yeah, I know it was ridiculous. It was actually ridiculous. And that was when I actually first launched the first iteration of my group coaching program in March, 2020, funnily enough. Um, and, and so I did actually pivot like when I had my baby, I stopped doing one-to-one done for you services. Um, I still do consulting. I'll still do strategy, but like for the most part, I focus on my programs and my courses now. Um, but that in and of itself was also a pivot in my business. And while I have, it has made, you know, I've made more money this year than I have in past years. Um, definitely in 2020, cause I only worked like seven months out of the entire year because of, between the baby and COVID and everything, it was like ridiculous, but I still cracked. I think I cracked like 110 K just, you know, so I'm like, Ooh, imagine if I'd worked those five months, you know, but you can't think like that because, <laughs> cause that'll drive you crazy. So what I did notice after I had the baby was that like, I got really freaking clear on what the needle movers were in my business and what I needed to be doing and what I did not need to be doing. And like, you know, that saying, you know, if you, if you get, you need something done, ask a busy person. So I find when I have less time, I am more productive, right? So if I know that my baby is sleeping and I will maybe get an hour out of her, I will be super freaking productive during that hour because I mean, anything could happen. Like she could wake up after half an hour. I mean, she could wake up after 45 minutes. She can give me two. I mean, I don't even know. Right. So, you know, when you, when you are, when you live like that, you get like really clear, like, okay, like I need to know before I even sit down at my desk, what work needs to get done that week, that day, even um, so that you don't have to waste time deciding what to do. Right. And so, um, so I would definitely, make, I, I made a big priority, like on Saturday nights, I'd like sit and kind of like plan my week or Sunday morning sometimes. 
Um, and I would literally pre- plan my week out. Like, what is my big priority this week? What needs to get done? What, what is a non-negotiable? Um, you know, what, what cannot be de- delegated to anyone else? And then the rest I would delegate to my assistant. Um, and yeah, and you know what? My business maybe grew a little slower than it would have had I had more time to dedicate to it. But the fact, I mean, I got a really great trade. I got my baby and she is like just the cutest thing ever. And I, you know, I don't for a second think like, I think that she's only like made me a better business owner and a better, you know, delegator. She's like helped me really like let go of things because I just, I had to, and then I, I chose to, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah, so yeah, totally. I can so, yeah, 100% I mean, relate to this too. It's not easy. It's not easy. And obviously babies are not easy. And also, I mean, you could have, I'm lucky. She was like relatively, I mean, we had a really hard time nursing in the beginning, but she was like relatively, you know, average baby, right? She slept sometimes. She didn't sleep sometimes. She ate like, you know, if you have a baby with colic, right. Or, 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 or or allergies or something like that, then obviously things are going to be very different or you have twins, you know, like, um, but I do think that, um, people think sometimes that, you either need to like get all your like stuff done before you have a family or you have to wait till your kids are all grown up to like really su- succeed. So, I mean, I put that in quotes because like, I mean, what's the definition of success really? Right. But like, let's say, to, let's say to, to, to succeed and have a profitable, successful business. Okay. So I'll, we'll, I'll quantify it that way. Um, and I just don't think that's true because I mean, I had multiple six figure years with less time with loads of kids uh, through, you know, through a pregnancy <laughs> um, with a baby Right. Um, and, and through a pivot even right into a completely different business model. And, um, and so like my whole thing, I teach my clients is consistency. And I, and I, and I tell them like, I feel like I'm essentially the excuse buster, right? Like, cause whatever excuse you've got, I pro- I can probably counter that with something, right? Oh, you have kids. So do I, I probably have more kids. Okay. Except for my friend. Right. But like, um, you know, are, you know, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying like you should not be giving yourself grace, but I'm saying if you really prioritize your business, um, you will find a way, you will find a way to take, you know, carve out the time to make it work. Um, and that's, that's, that's kind of like my little like soapbox thing. Cause I, you know, I, I feel, have a lot of like, like, I feel really, I really feel for new moms, especially because they have so much on them and there's so much like pressure to like do everything right. You know, and especially if it's your first kid, you feel even more, you know, like I would not go back to having a first kid if you paid me a million dollars. Okay. Uh, that is like, that was like the most bewildering. I mean, I'm granted I was 19, but like still like whether you're 19 or 29 or 39, your first kid is your first kid. And that was like the scariest like experience of my life. And I just realized I was like fully responsible for another human being. Um, but I, I think that, I think that like, that should give them hope. Like you don't need to wait, like you can do both. Right. And like, I just want to reiterate again, like you don't have, you can have it all, but you don't need to do it all. Um, and, you know, enlisting support of, you know, business support and, you know, having a coach, having a community, having, you know, team members, even if you have a VA for five hours a week to start with, right? Like, I'm not saying hire a full-time employee right off the bat. I know some people say that, and I heart, I wholly disagree with that. Um, you know, just high, just practice delegating and also in your home, right? Like, again, outsource things to your husband and your kids or your partner and your kids. Like, they are probably capable of way more than they are currently doing. Um, and you just have to let them step up and and kind of take that responsibility and take ownership. Mm-hmm. No, oh my gosh, I'm, I disagree with everything that you say because after well, I had my first my my only at this time of recording my okay. son when I was thirty, but it was the same thing. It was just this massive fear. Like we had a dog, and I was like, okay, so I can raise a dog, and I didn't kill the dog, so hopefully I can raise a baby and not kill the baby and the baby. Oh, it is obviously. nothing, nothing like a dog, which is the ironic thing is people say like, Oh, you know, would you, would you get a dog? That could be so great for your kids. I'm like, no, that is a way too much responsibility. Yeah. Our dog, <laughs> I swear. He's like a second child. He's yeah. so much freaking work, but yeah. uh, and they don't even get toilet trained eventually. Like you have right. to take him out for walks, like from birth to death, you know? So yeah. like, well, yeah, I mean, I feel fence, like kids eventually so. wipe their own butts. Yeah. So. Well, we have a fence so we can just like let him out in our back. Okay. That's good. So, All right. Yes. And that's good. Yeah, yeah, we have that. But if we were to ever like live in a city or something, oh, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I live in a city. So yeah, I mean, I do have a garden, but I do live in a city. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. But I also just want to just quickly talk about that clarity point that you were mentioning too, because I mean, it was the same for me, like before I um, had my son and I was running my business, I was working like 16 to 18 hours a day. Like it was ridiculous. And then you after, could though, because I could, you could. Exactly. Right. 
exactly. And after I had him, I only had like maybe two hours a day to work because I was working during his nap time. So it was like this, but all of the work that I got done in those 16 hours, I got done in those two hours. So it's amazing how that happens, right? It's, it's like the 80, 20 really rule. It's like the 80, 20 <laughs> rule at, at work. Like you can see it in your own life. It's insane. Yeah. And I've talked to so many other moms who do the same thing. It's like, I don't know what that, um, like that analogy is, is like, when people are coming over, if you have five minutes, you're going to get more done in five minutes than if you would have planned like the whole day to clean your house or something. Yes. Like yes, <laughs> um, exactly. But yeah, no, it's so true. So true. So I so appreciate you being here, sharing your story about just having all of these kids, the successful business. I know that so many other moms are going to relate to this and just be like, okay, thank God I'm not alone. I'm not the only one going through all of this. So um, if anybody wants to connect with you, where's the best place for them to come say hi? Yes, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at the Al Bendahan. Um, probably the link will be below. I assume it'll be somewhere. Yeah, it'll be um, and yeah, please reach out to me. I mean, don't just follow me. Like, actually, message me because I answer every single message. And um, I would love to connect with you and chat. And and you know, listen, momhood is hard. It is a it is a constant challenge and a balance of like, am I doing enough on this side? Am I doing enough on that side? And especially when you have a business, like it's hard enough just by itself. And then balancing a business is like balancing like like a teenager plus all your kids. Right. Like that's how I, that's the only way I can really imagine it. Like it's, it's so not easy. And I, and my kids, you know, I told you my, my, my 12 year old son told me he'd rather be dead than wash the dishes. I mean, like, I mean, talk about <laughs> so great parenting. And <laughs> I know. I was like, where'd you get this from, dude? Like, re- I mean, probably for me, but whatever, you know, but like, it's, it's, it's definitely like, it's just a constant, like doing the best you can realizing you're doing the best you can with the tools that you have. Um, and you know, you're only human and God gave you the children that you're meant to have. And God gave you the personality you're meant to have. Um, and all you can do is work to be the best you can be. And, and that's it. You know, like there's only so much you can do. You will never be perfect. Very hard lesson that I had to learn as a perfectionist. So, um, I'll pass this on to the people who will not believe me, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> like yeah, no, you'll never, recovering you'll never perfectionist be perfect. over here too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. It's, it's the worst. It's the worst. Right. Yeah. And like, it's like a perfectionist and a control freak. It's like, you literally can't win, you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I just hope that like, this has helped somebody. Um, and I'm not telling you to have five kids or 10 kids or anything, but like, just so you realize, like, it does not mean, you know, having more, you know, multiple children, um, does not mean the end of your life as you know, it, it does not mean the end of your business. Um, it can actually like, it can actually help make you a better business owner. And like just more efficient and more productive, which um, sounds counterproductive, but it's actually true. So Mm -hmm. yeah, Yeah, totally agree. And that was a perfect way to end this episode. So thank you again for being here. It was so good to talk with you. You too. Thanks so much, Stephanie.